Well, I'm running for Palo Alto City Council because I think our future matters. I've spent a lot of time, as you know, working in the community to get good results on challenging issues. And I'm prepared to work for the entire community now to resolve some of the issues that are starting to create uh, a lot of uh, complexity in Palo Alto. And how we decide these will determine the quality of our future. I started getting involved in Palo Alto when my kids were in the schools. I uh, became a PTA co-president from Walter Hayes Schools the first year that, uh, the first time ever that the superintendent asked that we cut finances at the schools. So it was during that year when I started to question whether or not it was time to have a more uh, pumped up system for producing fundraising dollars for the schools. And so I spent a long time working with the community broadly to uh, get results on that. And I instigated district-wide fundraising, spearheaded it, and I stayed with it until it was finished. And then uh, from there, it propelled itself into a policy which now has become a reliable source of income every year for the school community. From then, I've gone on to work for uh, Palo Altans for Government Effectiveness, where I have done leadership programs to try to uh, encourage citizen engagement, uh, good quality, and I myself has taken Mid Peninsula high, uh, leadership classes, so I was able to expand my skills even more. And I am a managerial accountant by trade, so I am always working with numbers. A managerial accountant is one who basically took over all of the scope of a CPA after the 1986 Tax Act, which means that we take care of all of the activities of financial management up through the tax read up to the tax return independent self -employed. yes i'm self employed uh, i do it both for pay and i finally have a nice little stipend from community legal services in east palo alto where i've worked for the last 4 years keeping them safe as a nonprofit i've got four children they're all grown i came in um, with a couple people wanting me to get involved because they know how passionate i am that there is no leadership mid peninsula anymore in the city of palo alto and i felt that that was a great um, and inspiring class that I went through to learn about all the different angles that you can get support services for, where you can turn the community to if they um, have a need, and it exposed me to there's an awful a lot of issues that are pressing on Palo Alto, and I'm, there's this feeling that we're losing the values that we moved here for. Um, and it's hard to exactly identify what those values are. There's a certain type of community feeling that Palo Alto has. We all know what it feels like. We know how to be a member of a community. And as we look at these big agendas coming in from outside of Palo Alto, I would like to, our community to hold together and uh, maintain their focus as we make these decisions so we can propel Palo Alto forward. There's a financial crisis going on and so we have a big deficit right now that is challenging us. Usually we don't have to, we have, you know, good sales tax receipts and and uh, the uh, contracts have been financially lucrative, you know, with the instruments that have been, well, I'm trying to express how we ended up with a large, you know, problem with the contract with the unions right now. Everybody thought that the financial you know, instruments would take care of their retirement and it's all coming back home now um, to where we have to pay as we go. And these are, these are struggles for current council. Uh, we also have uh, Stanford Hospital wants to do a build twice as high as, they, as we allowed our developments to to be, and we've got uh, the state asking us to put in more housing units, even more housing units than before. Um, and we have a, a, a mass transit system called high speed rail coming through Palo Alto and up and down the peninsula that will bring an urban feel to our community and divide it if we don't uh, proactively work together as a community to shape the, our future. The council could keep the community a little closer to how things operate in Palo Alto more broadly. Um, that's been the experience that I've had as PTA Council President where it wasn't just the issues that PTA Council had. I had to sit down and work with the superintendent to make sure that we also kept track of the issues that he had on his agenda. There's a lot of uh, uh, the housing, uh, the implications of densification of housing that the state is asking us to do is starting to make our community feel like it's not the community that we moved here for. 
Uh, there are a variety of reasons for that, and I think that we could help as community members articulate a more regional approach to um, asking the state to look at us with our neighboring communities because we are a good job source for people that don't just live in Palo Alto. The City Council could be ahead of some of these issues a little better so that they can frame them for our community. One of the questions that was asked to me early on was what do I want Palo Alto to look like in five years? I think we've seen the changes that have happened in five years in Palo Alto and the community is questioning some of the uh, policies that are in place um, to have results that don't exactly look like what we thought we had, you know, with uh, with you know our comprehensive plan. You, you jump into a hot issue, you have no idea where it's going to go. But your biggest thing is to bring all the stakeholders together to make sure that they tell you, you know, what is their interest, so that you can navigate through it. And then, after the process is done, come up with a product. One of the three pronged approaches for our city to balance our current deficit. Um, I took a long time to decide on it, but I do like the idea that we are asking our businesses to pay $34 per person per year or $95 per person per year in order to um, work here in Palo Alto. I don't think that that's uh, an, an inappropriate the act. The financial crisis has brought about a huge restructuring of everybody's lives right now and it's I've written about this a couple times, so I know how severe this is and how deep this is. And so restructuring not just the union contract, but going back into contracts with throughout City Hall needs to be looked at because they might not become viable in the future. Um, and I think that that's one of the reasons why City Council has to uh, go, th you know, go through this process with the unions right now. Um, I'm hoping that it can be collaborative. I'm hoping that they can resolve this without a strike. But uh, going forward, the current contract, the way I understand it, is not sustainable. It was pointed out to me that thankfully we're saving more children, so we need more space for them. So. Um, and adults. <laughs> and adults. Uh, you know, I, I, there are going to be mitigations for. Uh, I think if the traffic mitigations are not far-sighted, that would concern me deeply because the infrastructure in Palo Alto for getting people moved around here is limited and we are maxing out quickly. And if we can't, you know, ideally I would like to see a plan, but I'd also ideally like to be able to go back as things get built and put in service so that we can make sure that it is working and that both Stanford and Palo Alto look at that. Um, you know, beyond that, I don't know what would, obviously there's other things that would make me not want to keep going on the negotiations, but uh, we need a hospital, we need this project online because in 2013, if it's not seismically upgraded or in the loop for getting seismically upgraded, the state will not allow it to be open. So there is some expediency that we need to have on this project. The California Avenue tree issue is, um, is really sad. I, I think that the city manager handled it really nicely last night by, uh, by, and is, I was proud of him addressing all of the issues, taking the blame for what had happened, and uh, making the type of apology that you can't even make for something that is uh, what some people describe as clear cutting. So uh, I think that that was really more than unfortunate because when I went to a block party, they just said, let's fire all nine members of city council, you know, for over this. And so the community is not feeling as though, once again, it's another indication that things maybe are not as transparent as you've already talked about as they could be. And the city manager took the blame for that. And I was very proud of him for doing that.